1988, Ferguson almost signed Paul Gascoigne. It would have been football's greatest what ifs. Majid, what did Ferguson see in Paul Gascoigne? He saw the English Maradona. He saw the real McCoy, something Englishmen have not seen, a natural footballer. Um, he saw someone who could play with both his feet, was attacking, constantly attacking, and was purely natural at it. I also think he saw the attacking version of Roy Keane in Paul Gasquin, his franchise midfielder going forward for the next 10 to 15 years. So he saw in him the create the spark that was needed to propel United forward. The guy was an artist. Uh, with the ball, the way that he played, it was like a, it was a joy to watch. But did his stats back up his style of play? Unfortunately, no. His statistics do not, which is why he is never compared to Maradona or mm. Messi, uh, usually. <laughs> he scored 83 <laughs> goals in 380 appearances in uh, Europe, uh, the European leagues. And he scored 10 goals in 57 appearances. Uh, for on international duty for England. So they're not bad statistics, but they're not once in a generational statistics at all. Which is kind of uh, odd to see because when when he played early on in his career, and then when he played internationally, he was quite recognized when he played for England in 1990. Football's coming home, basically. But it not, it didn't really work out for him. He was kind of like a nomad after that. He moved around quite a lot, and his style of his stats didn't back his style of play. So why is that? Why did he move around a lot? Why did his career kind of fizzle out? So he played for seven clubs in seventeen years. When you talk about like footballing mm. nomad, he like seven clubs is, and he only does sort of three four years at every club, and then has to move on. The reason he has to move on is because he dealt with a lot. Uh, he just dealt with a lot. Period. As a human being, as a dude, as a footballer, as a family yeah. person, as a celebrity. He dealt with everything. Before Beckham or Rooney, it was Paul Gascoigne. Um, he didn't help his case. He fought his own. He had his own inner demons, alcoholism, yeah. a bad work ethic, a lack of focus. But there were also external factors, Working up, uh, growing up poor, dealing with deaths of friends, dealing with just the tabloid frenzy and the media circus that surrounded him and prodded him and encouraged him to continue being the class clown and less the genius you know that's it's he had a really troubled life you mentioned tragedy that kind of fueled his drinking culture and the way the media kind of went after him especially after 1990 this is why people talk about the what if when he almost signed for man united Spurs jumped in and bought his parents a house. And that's kind of why people always talk about his ro move to Man United. Could it have stabilized both him as a person? And would it have propelled his career? And that's something that we want to take a look at now. The what ifs is whether you think all of those factors, if Ferguson had managed him, like he managed so many problem cases, would he have flourished at United? And more importantly, actually, this is pre-United success under Ferguson. Would Man United, would Ferguson have flourished with Gascoigne at the helm? Good questions. Um, does Gaza flourish at United if he embraces and absorbs Ferguson's spirit and his teachings? He definitely flourishes. There's too many United... There's two-storied a legacy of United players flourishing under Ferguson for that to sort of be a part of it. But does Gaza have that inner drive even in 1989 after signing? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know and I don't think so. Now the flip side of that is how does United and Ferguson do with Gascoigne? And it's re that's the more interesting one in my opinion and that's the one where I don't know. I don't know if United has a legacy after that. What if they spent, what if they go all in on Gaza, think they've solved their problems and never sign Cantona and do not get that mental yeah. break and win the league, the, right? The domino effect. The domino effect, the butterfly yeah. effect. There's, 
Like, what if you go all in on Gaza and you're so set that you sort of get tunnel vision and you don't see the other worldly options, including, you know, Bergkamp and stuff like that, people who brought in different philosophies into the EPL, diet, exercise, regime, stuff like yeah. that. That's, uh, okay, very good points. Now, Ferguson, you mentioned Cantona. Cantona kind of propelled uh, Man United. And Gascoigne was the kind of player that Ferguson was looking to propel him. So you don't think that with the Ferguson managing Cantona, looking at Beckham, who also possibly shared that international star status, Rooney, Anderson, these are players that Ferguson led to being successful because of his nature. But what about his failures? Were there failures under Ferguson? Um, there were a couple, but there's not that many. There's guys like, because they're failures, we don't know them. Uh, Ravel Morrison, Bebe. Yeah. Um, these guys did not last for too long. Veron, Jemba Jemba, uh, Bartez yeah, yeah. at one point, that like early 2000s like period of instability right after the treble. But with Ferguson, and this goes back to now the coach, he's very judgmental and set in what he wants from his players. So if you're not performing for six months to a year, you, they don't really stick around. You don't see bad players at United under Ferguson. Well, possibly later on in their career, but I think it's an interesting point. Like, how would Gascoigne, like, Ferguson was trying to build a culture of success. How would Gascoigne have impacted that, especially when he was trying to build and bring through a younger generation? It goes back to whether we think Ferguson would have put up with him. Would he have made, would he have taken Man United to the next level? So you don't actually think that Gascoigne himself would have flourished? You don't think, like, one, Ferguson would have put up with him, or two, Gascoigne would have actually achieved some success? Yeah, I don't... I agree with everything you just said. Um, I don't think he would have done too well, especially given that Gaza is the last of the Mohicans in terms of the pub culture, <laughs> pub culture footballer. Yeah. He is the last of the few remaining. And at that time, I think Ferguson himself wanted to end that exact culture. Um, I don't think necessarily it's that easy for Gaza to just sort of say, yeah, I'm done and new lifestyle. I don't think it works that way. I think, again, he spent six months... You think his months... demons would have caught up with him? Yeah, yes. It, like no, six man. months, it... a year, and then, you know, the pop culture. It's a bit of a shame because with this what if, you kind of... Uh... You kind of love Paul Gascoigne. Like, you look at his life, it's, it's kind of... It's really sad. He's like the class clown who's, who's a genius. Um, the way that he played with so much joy. I, I really wanted to work, but I kind of agree with you. I think Ferguson would have taken him out the door or showed him the door in a couple of years. Like, he really wanted... He really... He is a winner. And I think Paul Gascoigne, as much as he would have loved him as a person... I would have think that he would have shown him the door. He said that I'm trying to build a winning culture. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. It's a great what if. Um, would Gascoigne have flourished at Man United? That's the question that's always asked. But do you think that Man United would have flourished with Gascoigne at the home? Let us know your thoughts below. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. It'll go a long way. Majid, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.